So where we left off in the last video, Vi and myself had posed a mystery to you. We had talked about Benford's Law. And we asked, what is up with Benford's Law? This idea that if you took just random countries and took their population and took the most significant digit in their population and plotted the numbers, the numbers of countries that their most significant digit is a 1 versus a 2 versus a 3, you just had it was much more likely that it would be a 1. Or that if you took physical constants of the universe, that they're more, most likely to have 1 as their most significant digit. And that, um, I wish we had more graphs, because graphs are fun. Yes. But if you look at information from the stock market or anything. Yes, and, then, and, and, the, yes, and it seemed to all follow this curve. And what was ex extremely mysterious, and this is where we finished off the last video, was mm -hmm. if you look at pure, I would say, compounding phenomenon like, like for example, the Fibonacci sequence or uh, powers of two, that exactly fits the Benford distribution. It exactly fits this. If you take all the powers of two, exactly 30 or I don't know, a little, little bit over 30% of those powers of two, all of the powers of two have one as their most significant digit. A little bit, what is this, like 17, roughly 17% of all of them have two as their most significant yeah, digit. Although in this case, there's an infinite number in every section. Yes. So it's, it's harder yes. to graph. But, but if you wanted, you if you wanted, if you wanted to infinite. try it out, you could take the first million powers of two mm -hmm. and then find the percentage. And that'll probably give you a pretty good approximation of things. Yeah. So, so that's the. So to me, that's, that's like less mysterious when you're looking at, I mean, on the one hand, wow, this fits exactly with mathematics, but that yes. also gives you a really good handle because you you realize, all right, there's something yeah. here I can it's, actually take a look you at. You can take a look at it and it starts to become something you can dig deeper in. And we said at the last video, we wanted you to pause it and, 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 and think about why this is happening because frankly, we had to do that the same thing. And, and uh, a big clue for us was when we looked at a logarithmic scale. And, and we're looking at one right over here. And, and just to be clear, what's going on in this logarithmic scale is, you see equal spaces on the scale are powers of 10. So on a linear scale, this would be a 1, and maybe this would be a 2, and then a 3. Or if we wanted to say that this is a 2, you would say this is a 1, this is a 10, this would be a 20, mm -hmm. then it would be a 30, so on and so forth. But in a logarithmic scale, equal distances are, are, are times 10, or in this case, if we're taking powers of 10. So this is 1 to 10, then 10 to 100, then 100 to 1,000. And you see how the numbers in between fall out. That the space between 1 and 2 is pretty big, and then 2 and 3 is still pretty big, but a little bit smaller. And then 3 and 4 get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to 10. And that's a pretty big clue about what's going on with Benford's Law. Yeah, it, it seems to match up somehow. So there's a connection here. And it actually turns out, and this is a, actually a very big clue, that this, if you take this area, if you take this area right here as a percentage of this entire area, as, as a percentage of this entire area, it's exactly this percentage. It's exactly that percentage there. And if you take this area as a percentage of that entire area, it's exactly this percentage, that roughly 17% or whatever that number is right over there. So that's a huge clue. Yeah, or at least for, for our powers of two or Fibonacci sequence thing, uh, for powers, per, for, it definitely makes sense. Yes, for for any powers, and so so and and so, the logic is, and and this is now our biggest clue, is to actually plot the powers of two on a logarithmic scale like this. All right, let's see where they fall. All right, let's try it out. So two to the zeroth power is one. Two to the first power is two. Then you get to four. Then you get to eight. Then you get to sixteen, which is going to be someplace around here. Then you want to go to 32, which is going to be someplace around there. That's 30, so it's 32. Then you want to go to 64. And so this is 40, 50, 60. 64 is going to be right, right over there. And so what you see is when you plot the powers of 2 on this logarithmic scale, they're equal distance apart. So you, you, keep, you keep stepping along. Even if you were plotting on a linear scale, they get further and further apart. Yeah. Actually, twice as far apart every time. But if on this scale right over here, they are equally spaced. So what's happening is you have something that's just equally stepping along. You can imagine even just like walking along this. And if your sidewalk is shaped like this logarithmic scale, you're just much more, the probability on any given step, as you do many, many steps, or as you count all the steps, you're going to have many, many more steps that fall into the block that's between 1 and 2, or between 10 and 20, than you will, for example, the block that's between 9 and 10. Yeah, if you just take a, a random point along uh, here, you're more likely to fall in a area starting with 1. Right, one of these areas, or you know, between exactly starting with 1, so between 1 and 2, or 10 and 20, or 100, and, and that's exactly mm -hmm. 
So taking equal steps is going to give you that distribution, unless your steps happen to, because they're special cases, right? So if, if Where you're people doing, walk logarithmically. If you walk, if you <laughs> walk well, if you walk from one to ten, if, if your steps are uh, ten long. Yes, and the special cases, yes. If, if, you're, so if, you're, if your steps there. are you ten long. To hit exactly. On right, but if you're anything, doctor, any slight doctor. variation away from that exact thing, and then yeah, you will, you'll end get up the distribution. all over the place. The Benford's distribution. Benford's distribution. But this, this, even though I think we now understand why, it's still fascinating. Yeah, well, this this explains it for these number series. Yes. It does not explain. So now we have to somehow figure out how to connect that right. to. Right. And, and, the and real world information. The general idea, well, so for populations, and we read up a little about it, and Benford's distribution tends to work for things that, that grow exponentially, like yes, powers of two. Like powers of two. Like powers of two. And populations grow exponentially. Yeah, and uh, in finance, a lot of things also grow exponentially. Yes, or, or decline exponentially. Either decline, way, yeah. or, <laughs> but, but it, it tends to operate exponentially. You keep growing by 10% every year. That's an exponential of a path. What's fascinating is physical constants, and we actually aren't 100% sure why no, this is No, this is still crazy to me. This is, I, this is we only have theories here. And uh, the, the general idea, because, you know, physical constants are dependent on the units you're dealing with, uh, they're depending on, on, on a whole bunch of things, uh, but but they are, I, actually, I, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll let, I'll, I have a few very loose theories, uh, but, but I'll, I'll let, I'll, I'll let y'all think about that more. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, and so hopefully y'all enjoyed this. <laughs>